So guys, I just arrived and it's about 1, 12, let me see, hmm, about 1 o'clock, you can see it, no, yeah, 12.58, it says, and that's me in the mirror looking all bummy, this morning I look really hot, but, I missed my flight and I wasn't able to arrive earlier today so that's what happened the flight was delayed like four times guys four times do you believe it I went to eat, I took a nap, <laughs> I did everything that I shouldn't have, and that's how I missed my flight. I so anyway, I'm going to, what I'm going to do, take a shower, use the bathroom, do number two, and then I'm going to go to sleep, because it's late, it's late, it's late, okay? See you guys tomorrow. These rooms get smaller and smaller every time. guys I just woke up and I went to the bathroom washed my face brushed my teeth and now I'm gonna look through my my phone and relax a little bit I don't know I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do today um, when I went to Namibia I saw an influx of um, Africans choosing Namibia as a destination because I didn't know that you can actually have that desert experience in Namibia. You can have an ocean experience in Namibia. So we as Africans need to be ambassadors of our various countries. It's just that Africans are more like, oh, I'm Ghanaian, I'm going to fight for Ghana. I'm a Nigerian, I'm going to fight for Nigeria. No, I mean, me, I'm an African. And Africa is home for me. And I don't care about what people say. I don't care. I can be in Sierra Leone, and I'll talk about Sierra Leone as if I'm Sierra Leone. I will find myself in Cameroon and I will speak like a Cameroonian. Yeah. I don't see the borders because the more I travel in Africa, the more I realize that it's hey, just the same people. Yeah. So we gotta change that mindset. Yeah. You get what I mean? So it's a only Africans that feel like, oh, I'm Kenyan. I don't like Tanzania. Yeah. You know? I want Africans to change that mindset. Yeah. If we change that mindset, see, we should just start putting our differences aside. Okay. When you go to Europe. <laughs> Forgot to tell you guys where I'm at. I'm in New Orleans. I'm 
think I'll be going in that pool at all. Hey guys, good morning. I'm going on a tour today. The glass is a little bit murky. A city tour in New Orleans. But let me tell you, <laughs> I could not find the, the bus stop. It's a stop like this right here. See it over here. We couldn't find it. And there's one right in front of my hotel, but I decided to go to 17. So it was a, <laughs> I walked all the way down there to the end and had to come back. Someone told me what to look for. So it was necessary to take this trip. Otherwise I wouldn't have known what to look for. The people in the hotel didn't know about the bus stop and the tour. So it says hop on and off bus tour. So I'm basically gonna take the um, tour throughout the city. And it is so hot here, I must say guys. It's so hot. And I'm not a person that sweats a lot and man, I tell you, I'm sweating like a hog. I need to just go home. <laughs> I want to walk back to the hotel and sit in the lobby. But I don't want to look again for the next bus stop. So I think here is probably much safer for me. Not really safer because it's so deserted there. I don't see anybody that I don't see that much people here. But at least I know where the bus stop is. So when I get on the bus, I'll talk to you guys. All right, it's so hot, man. I don't complain about the heat, but man, oh, oh, oh. dangerous heat here. Seems like everybody here has tinted, um, they have tinted, what is it, cars? So it's like scary, it's so scary. Like every other car, they're tinted. They have tinted windows. Whew. And hardly you can see anyone here walking around. There are a few people walking around, but it's not much. Like you see those people over there. You see that guy over all the way down there, if you could see him. But it's rare. Whew. But anyway. I hope this bus comes really quick so I can get on and relax because I am hot. I would have loved to go on top, but man, I don't know if I can manage the sun. No sir, as the Jamaicans would say. <laughs> but anyway, let me show you my cute little outfit. You guys can see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bag. I was gonna take my little coconut bag, but um, just in case, I said I would like to put this camera in something. That bag is too small, so I decided to take this bag. Let me turn this camera off because it is hot, hot, hot. Whoa! <laughs> See you guys back in a few. Up, there it is. Right away. If you go straight. Straight on down, that's Canal Street at stop 19. When we get to 19, if you want to go to lunch with others, uh,
All right, I'll just see you have one. All right. It's feeling a little bit cooler. All right, uh, we're going to be taking off in just a second. I have to ask that everybody find a seat. Do you guys have ponchos back here? I guess I won't complain yeah. And this was their flagship theater. This was the best of the best. Now the water level in this area following Hurricane Katrina got to be a foot above stage level inside the Sanger Theater. So they have done a $53 million renovation to it if you ever get a chance to go in. Absolutely amazing on the inside. It is a historically accurate renovation. So they restored it back to how it looked in the 1920s. Very Art Deco, very, very beautiful. So in New Orleans, we are built in the Crescent. You come back this way. I'll give you the details in a moment. Right now, when you're right at the Fulton Street Market, that is a remarkable place. It sort of reminds you of the French Quarter uh, in a little cosmopolitan area. To your right is the fabulous Hilton Hotel. On your left will be the Four Seasons for Stop 18. Our next stop, Stop 18. For $15 million, we started learning English. We're still working on it. The the city was Governor Bienville, young Governor Bienville was in his 30s.
access is on your right. Here he is. You've seen him in the movies. It's your turn. The visit now that he's on. Right there, Donut. The man you need. Got the away waiting for you. And the comedy here to the right. I know you like world-class shopping, that's why you're here. Look to the right. This is the colonnade. Wonderful gifts from all over the world. Something that you'll never find anywhere else under the colonnade. Stop number two is the French Market. The golden statue of St. Joan of Arc is here in the middle of the street. She represents our culture. Getting people out of the city and that to an additional 5,000. So at one point you had more than 30,000 people inside the dome, only 300 National Guardsmen inside, and not enough supplies for that number of people for any amount of time. So the food ran out quickly, drinkable water ran out, the electricity did not work, plumbing did not work, and cell towers in the city were not working properly. So you had little information coming in or out of the dome. Now if the situation was not already bad enough, it was at that point the water started to rise around the dome. Nobody knew how high the water would get, when it would stop, even if it would stop. It hadn't happened before. Nobody knew when or if anybody was ever coming to get them. So very bad situation. Now eventually that water did stop and we got buses into the city. We got everybody out of the dome. At that point though, the dome so severely damaged that they thought they'd tear it down. Now had they done that, it would have been years before we got the Saints back into the city, if they even returned at all. So fortunately, they elected to repair the dome. It was at a cost of more than $186 million. That got our saints back into the city in just a little bit over a year. Now that gave everyone a little bit of a sense of normalcy again. Because that is one thing we do really well as a city, is we come together and we cheer for our saints. Now, the Pope did a service at the Dome in the 1980s, set an attendance record at 76,000. That record held for 